Hey, welcome to Kate Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to share with you two cards inspired by one hashtag. Let's get started. As you can see here, I have a mess. I went through all my little boxes, my jars, my little containers, my little ceramic bowls, and I found a lot of fun stuff to play with today. So to kick it off, I am going to use my pink oxide blender brush, and I'm going to say mm, that's probably picked raspberry. And I'm also going to say a lot of, I'm also going to say, that that is probably a 110 pound cardstock, and I would have used the outside in stitched scallop rectangle die by Lawn Fawn. And now for my red oxide blender brush, I know for a fact that that's lumberjack plaid, because that's my new favorite red. And to keep in tone with the reds, we are going to do a little bit of Copic coloring. This stamp is the Ugly Sweater from Yornex Stamp. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that this was part of a design team project I did as a guest designer for Yornex Stamp. And because the sweaters were just so gosh darn cute, I stamped out quite a few that I never got around to using. So while we're on the topic of using some old stuff, I should probably tell you a little bit about why these two cards are inspired by hashtag. Shop Your Crafty Stash is a new hashtag driven series about using items in your stash that you haven't used in a while or that you haven't used yet. I know I have that problem, how about you? This challenge was started by my friend Jordy over at Jordy's Cards. These projects are posted over on our YouTube channel and all are welcome to join in. If you don't have a YouTube, don't worry. Just post your mix on social media and use the hashtag ShopYourCraftyStash. And if you want to, go ahead and take Jordy in it. I'm sure she'd appreciate it. And while you're at it, don't forget to take a peek over at Jordy's cards. I'll leave her link to her YouTube and her Instagram, so you can go over there and check out how wonderful her makes are, and maybe even say hi. So now I'm just going in with a little bit of pink here and lightening everything up. And the one thing I found about the Recollections brand paper, the 110 pound that I've been using, is that I have to be careful with how many layers of Copic coloring that I have because I find lately that they tend to bleed quite a bit, especially when I'm dealing with small spots like this. I find that they just, they don't go well. So I end up having to go over them with a white jelly roll pen. So here I'm just playing around with some placement here. You can see I've got that uh, stitch square, I believe. It's the outside in stitch square? Uh, square? I can't remember. <laughs> I'll have to go through my stash and look. But after I'm done playing with placement, I'm going to take this navy blue Recollections brand. I want to say it might be 110 pound. It might be 65. I can't remember. But I'm just cutting it down to size to fit this panel properly. This is going to be an A2 size card. So once I'm satisfied with the size of it, I think I'm going to mount that back down onto a rectangle stitched, I believe. That's the outside in stitched rectangle die by Lawn Fawn. And I wanted to make sure that you could see that stitch where the blue kind of goes over it. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue, scratch that. I'm going to use some tape runner. <laughs> so I'm going to throw some tape runner down just to make this stick really quick because I had another card that I wanted to do and I didn't have a whole lot of time as usual. So all I'm going to do is going to stick that down to my card panel and line that up the best that I can so you can kind of still see that stitched. And I'm going to do something that you should never do. <laughs> I'm going to try and trim this down. <laughs> yeah, probably not one of my best decisions because you can get your blade sticky this way, but at this point it was like I was kind of frustrated because I should have measured twice and cut once and I wouldn't have all that stickiness. But don't worry, I went back and cleaned all that stuff off. It just created extra work. So I'm going to add some more glue down to that. And that white cardstock is a shimmer cardstock by Recollections. It's a 65 pound. It's what I had on my desk. Again, this is all stuff used that I had on my desk. I didn't reach for any of my oxide inks, any extra dyes, or any extra stamps. Just what was on my desk. 
So again, I will glue this panel down. I'll stand over top and kind of eyeball it out, mash that down and pull up a sleeve. Then I will take this square stitched cut that I did, add a lot of glue and some tape runner, and then I'm going to um, put it down like a diamond. So I'm going to line up my card base here and try to line this up the best that I can in the middle. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And this salu is French for hello, and I believe that is the CZ design, Kathy Zilski. It's one of the um, shadow die words that I got from Simon's stamp, and I believe it's still available. I don't know, I'd have to look, but I'll try to remember to leave that too in the description box below. So once I've figured out my little tiny glue bottle situation here, I am going to go over these letters carefully with a uh, long bead of glue, so that way I can adhere this down to my card base. And once I've put down enough glue to be able to stick this to my card base, I'm going to play a little bit more with the placement, as I wasn't 100% sure how I wanted this. So. I figured I'd settle on this, I'd line that salut, which is French for hello, as best that I can, and next I'm going to glue down the little ugly sweater. And I'm going to put this off kind of even, if you know what I mean. So I'll put this off to the side and at an angle, because I figured why not? <laughs> this is a scrap card made out of all the scraps that I had on my desk, and yeah, so next on the list, I've got some little half pearls that I want to put on the card, but I'm not quite satisfied with the color. Now, I thought about these pink and main pearls, but I decided not to. So I'm going to pull these guys out. I forget what brand this is. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I think I got this in a D stash box from Scrap and Stamp like over a year ago, and I remembered that you can take alcohol markers and color your beads. I know uh, somebody had commented this on my last video, and it was kind of funny because I remembered I did this in this video, and it's like, ooh, great minds think alike. So whoever sent me that link, I, I forget who off the top of my head, it was like you were reading my mind. Thank you. <laughs> You're the best. Anyway, so once I've colored in those beads or half pearls with my Copics, I'm going to put them all over my little card here. And then all I've got to do is put it on a card base. So I've got this light blue colored card base that I had on my desk, and voila! Tout fini! So next we are going to go through my little drawer of, or drawer, not jar little drawer of critters and things that I've colored, things that I've half colored, things that I may not have colored. And I've got the pups from the Simply Celebrate Critters and the little bunting banner from Scent with Love. And I believe the thanks is from, if I'm not mistaken, Simply Fall Sentiments or Scripty Fall Sentiments, I think it is. And because I didn't have it stamped out, and I just had the shadow cut out, I am going to take this black glazed Sakura pen, and I am just going to handwrite in where the stamp would be, because I wasn't allowing myself to grab anything extra. So I'll let that set off to the side to dry, and I've got a bit of this glitter cardstock, I want to say. Yeah, it's the glitter cardstock. Again, this is Recollections brand. I've got a lot of Recollections brand because I do have a Michaels in my city, and I tend to buy a lot of fun paper from there. And that's where my card, heavyweight cardstock comes from as well. So I'm taking this scrap of glitter paper, and then I'm going to take my post-it note, because I don't want to get my fingers stuck in there and cut off. And this is a little tip that I learned somewhere on YouTube. I can't remember who, but they showed you if you stuck it to another piece of paper, you could save your fingers. So I've cut that short enough to where it looks like a ledge, 
and I've cut it down enough to where it would fit through the, not through, but to each of the stitched lines. So they're not going over the stitch line. Again, this is an outside in stitched cut with the rectangle die from Lawn Fawn. And I've gone ahead and stuck a little tiny bead of glue to the edge of the dogs. And I'm going to line that up to the sparkly paper as if those lines at either end of the dog kind of line up with that. Now, that was my thinking anyway. So once I'm happy with the placement of these guys, I'm going to flip that over and give that a little press down and think about what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to grab my tape runner and I'm going to tape along the back, but I'm going to make sure to tape along the seam. There's that seam there because there's just a little tiny bit of glue holding that bit together. And because this tape runner is in little tiny rectangles, I'm able to fold down the excess that's kind of hanging over. And that's the type of uh, tape runner that I used to that I enjoy using. This is the I think it's the easy runner tape. Um, and you can get them in squares and dots. And I prefer the rectangles because. I sometimes don't have a straight hand when I'm laying it down, and I like that I'm able to fold them over. So once I've got everything glued down the way I like it, because this video is already long, I'm going to take the back side of this panel and I'm going to put over some more Easy Runner tape. So once I'm happy with how much, I'm going to figure out what I want to do next. So now I thought about just putting this on a white panel card, but then I remembered I still had a little bit of red oxide ink for Lumberjack Plaid on my brush. Now you can see how much lighter this is because I used a lot of it on my other card, and if I press hard enough, I can get a little bit more out of there. So that's what I did. So once I'm happy with the amount, make sure I'm putting it on the right way, I'm going to adhere that down to my card base and my card will be done. Now, I'm not going to bother putting on any embellishments on this one because I thought it was cute as is, and I didn't really have the any embellishments that I liked on my table that I thought would go well. I mean, I probably could have colored the half pearls in, but I had already used them. So once I'm happy with the placement, I will push that down, and here is my finished card for the first one. Here is my finished card for the second one, and here you have both of them together. I hope you enjoyed today's program, and I hope you play along with the hashtag. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care.